Hi, this is Jay with uh, Vintage Auto Garage, and I'm here to talk about the Borg Warner R10 R11 Overdrive that was made by Borg Warner back in the starting in the 1940s. Built them all the way up until about '64. Uh, I'm just going to disassemble this here a little bit so I can show you the different pieces. Um, the the difference between an R10 and an R11 is the number of planetary gears. So this is an R. 10 because it has four planetary gears. The, uh, the R11 simply had five planetary gears. It was a heavier duty unit typically found in trucks and um, bigger vehicles. So what we've done is we've, uh, we've disassembled this so you can see the inner workings of, um, of the overdrive and, and, and the electrical mechanical pieces of it. So the, the way this connects up is this is your tail shaft output okay and then this is the tail shaft housing that has the the bearings that hold this okay and then there's a gear here that runs the governor and the speedo the speedometer um, so we've just removed this uh, there's a the large bearing here um, and we've just taken the the, the uh, needle bearings out of that uh, this is the transmission side, so this bolts up to the transmission. This is the lockout rail here, and the lockout rail is controlled by this cable here. Um, and this cable connects simply to a set of linkage, and in internally that linkage moves this lockout rail back and forth. It'll lock this transmission in and out. And I'll explain to you a little bit in a, a minute why that's important. So there's a, th this... This cable is typically um, you'll find under the dash, so you pull it out and it will lock the the overdrive out. You push it in and the overdrive um, will act. You can activate it. Okay. So from an operational standpoint, um, it was it was pretty ingenious the way they built this. Um, and this again was a, an early day automatic trend to the automatic transmission. Um, and installed in 13 different um, manufacturers, Packard, Ford, Chevrolet, Dodge, Chrysler, Studebaker. They all used this exact same overdrive system. They had a little bit different wiring um, schematics. They wired them up a little different. The, the, the color coding were all a little different. So if you look at a Studebaker versus a Ford, you're going to find their... The wiring is the wiring colors are not compatible, but they're all the same. They're all essentially have the same components, so they are interchangeable. You just have to understand how to wire them up, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Vintage Auto Garage has come up with a a, a a wiring harness and a and a really good set of schematics to be able to to help do that. So um, the um, the components are the solenoid, and this is an electro, electromechanical solenoid. Um, so when voltage is applied to this, 12 or 6 volts, depending on what vehicle you have, it pushes this shaft out, and the shaft engages a pawl, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, to test a solenoid, um, there's two terminals here. So you hold your solenoid like this, the terminal on the right, and to the gr and the ground is on the on on the case, so from here to here, with a set of test cables or um, uh, battery cables, that that pin will will fire out. There's it's spring loaded, so it'll spring load back in. When you have these out and you have them out of the bench, don't take them and push them down, um, because you have a uh, you'll 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 bend the little points in here, and the, the purpose of the points that are inside is to switch from the coil that pushes the the shaft out to holding the shaft out. So there's actually two sets of coils in here. Um, it, and it, it's a, it's a heavy duty piece. Most of them have a one inch uh, shaft length and you measure it from this flange, this alignment flange here to the tip. It's gonna be one inch. Uh, you may find uh, transmission has a one and a half inch uh, shaft. And that was typically found in, um, in convertibles and wagons. Because when they, when they put the overdrive in a convertible or a wagon, uh, because of the cross member underneath there, they had to have an adapter 
housing that actually would clear that uh, X frame. So they had to come. They, that, so they had to build a separate uh, overdrive with a longer. I mean, um, uh, a solenoid with a longer shaft on it to be able to reach down and be able to connect up with a pole. Okay. So, but typically they're one inch. You can buy brand new one inch uh, solenoids. Uh, you're not going to find any one and a half inch solenoids. If you have one and you need to have it repaired, Vintage Auto Garage has a great shop and they can repair um, any, any of these solenoids um, and governors. Um, so, so, you, so you don't have to throw them away. Okay, so that's the solenoid. Um, this is the kick down switch and the kick down switch uh, typically is under the gas pedal or it's up on the linkage of the carburetor. When you, when, and the purpose of this is you press down hard on the gas pedal, it, it's a little slide switch here that just activates, um, it just removes the, the, the um, continuity between these two, connects these two together, and what that does is it disconnects the overdrive. Okay, so when it's out, the overdrive will work. When it's in, the overdrive is out of, out of overdrive. And the purpose of this is, so when you're in overdrive, um, and you need to pass a car, or you need to quickly get it out of overdrive, uh, you just step down hard on the gas pedal, and then that presses down, and it'll kick it out. That's why they call it a kick-down switch. It will kick out the, the uh, solenoid, and it takes it out of, out of overdrive. There's a, there's a wiring harness that wires all of this together. This happens to be one that's made by Vintage Auto Garage. They've done a really good job. Um, building this. I don't know if you can see it here or not, but it's a great wiring diagram and it shows all the different pieces in here and it's uh, well color coded so it's simple to be able to wire this up. Okay, so that's the basic uh, components. There is a relay that goes in between um, that, that actually activates the solenoid uh, and then works with the kick down and I don't have that here to show you but it's a uh, it's a, it's a simple device here. Vintage Auto Garage builds a great one. Uh, there's no external fuse. It's in, internally, um, it's got an in, internal uh, uh, circuit breaker, so it will automatically reset. They build it in a 6 and 12 volts. So, the, 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 these are the, the, the components. Um, so, the, the way this operates is with the handle in, and, and the, the rail is, is in, and again, that's, that's when you put, this is the push-pull cable, and it'll, it'll move this in and out, and it'll engage or disengage the overdrive. Um, so the handle's in, um, and you start out in first gear. If you get to 28 miles an hour in first gear, um, it'll automatically go into overdrive after 28 miles an hour, and that's because the governor um, spins up from the tail shaft, spins up, and then there's a contact closure, tells the relay to close the contacts, activates the solenoid, and puts the little pawl in, and then you're in overdrive. So anything over 28 miles an hour in any gear, um, I'll leave this out for a moment, any gear, uh, you're in overdrive. As long as the handle's in, over 28 miles an hour, it will automatically go into overdrive and, uh, and actually operate like an automatic transmission. Overdrives in first, second, third. The, the only thing you have to make sure is the handle's in and you're going past 28, 30 miles an hour and, and, and you're in overdrive. So that's how you operate it. Now, the other reason for the handle under the dash was when you're in overdrive with the handle in, um, the, the, the car will freewheel. Um, so that caused a problem with, um, with cars when they're parked on a hill. You know, the brakes weren't very good back in those days. And uh, so you'd set the brake, that if the handle was out, the car could freewheel and run away down the hill on you. So when you, when you operate an overdrive, you want to make sure you pull the handle out, and that way it will disengage the overdrive and make sure that the wheels are tied to the transmission 
which is tied to the engine. So the compression of the engine will make sure that the car doesn't run away or at least help prevent it. So, um, so that's the other purpose for the, um, for the handle. Okay, so now let me show you a little bit about how, to, uh, how this operates. So there's a, and I'm gonna pull this out of here, see if I can get it out. There is a pawl that's a, this is, this is what does the work that engages and disengages the, the, the overdrive. So you can see it's a, it, it, it's a good sized piece of hardened steel. Okay, it's got a little slant on it so it can go in and, 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 uh, and stop the, the rotation in here, which will put it into overdrive. Um, and the way this is connected to the solenoid is through this, these little flat spots. And it goes in, it turns, and then it's connected up. And then as, the, as it goes into overdrive, this pushes out. It pushes down in here. And then you go into overdrive. And then it's a spring loaded, so it'll pull it out of overdrive when there's no power on it. Okay, so to install a solenoid, let's put this back in here now that you can see how this works. Um, the way Borg Warner recommend doing this is to activate the solenoid. So get yourself a set of battery cables or test leads. This terminal to here will activate the, the, the shaft. So the shaft will go out. So it'll be sitting out about here. So then when you, uh, when you install it, remember you can't see anything here, so you gotta get, do this blindly. So you put this in at, a, at a, about a, a 30 degree angle and you insert it down insert it down in here like so now remember now see if this shaft is not out you can't turn it and this happens and we'll get calls and say I can't get the I can't get the the solenoid to, to turn in here and you don't want to force it because you'll 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 really damage this so when you go that's why you want to extend the shaft so so this goes in and then turns okay all right then you want to Start your, your two bolts and then take the power off and then that'll suck this right in. And then you'll know that it's, it's connected and it will not come out. When it's, when it's connected, you will not be able to pull it out of there, okay? There's no uh, gasket or anything in here. There is a seal, all right? There is another seal that you have to make sure that you install when you, um, when you put this in. Um, there's a seal here that when we repair them or what was made new, there's a seal here. Okay, that's staked in. You can't take that one out. But there's another seal that goes down in here. It's the same seal, actually. And you have to make sure that you replace that seal. Um, and that, so that prevents the fluid, uh, because actually this is sitting up like this, because the fluid's on the bottom. So that prevents the fluid from coming out of that hole and into the uh, into the solenoid. If you do see little drips of oil, there's a little weep hole back here, that means that the seals have gone bad and you got oil down inside this, which you don't want. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the uh, solenoid. That's how it's installed. Um, we talked about the kick down. We talked about the um, the wiring harness. Um, there is a, um, there's, when, when you're wiring this up, um, part of the wiring is going to the coil um, that when you take it out of overdrive, um, you can only imagine that you've got torque on here and you've got torque on this pawl and you're just relying on the spring to pull the pawl back out. Well, when you have torque on there, it's not gonna come out. Um, unless, you act, unless you put the clutch in, then it would come out, or you s momentarily stop the engine. Well, the board wanted to, and, the, and the car manufacturers wanted to make this as automated as they could. So when you go into kick down mode, or you're under 28 miles an hour, it will momentarily stop the coil, or excuse me, ground the coil out. So it will stop the engine momentarily. And then by stopping the engine momentarily, it takes the torque off of it 
and allows the uh, solenoid to, to release, okay? So that's, that's why it's wired to the, to the coil. Okay, so a couple, um, couple uh, areas around operation. Um, you know, the car manufacturer, the Borg Warner, as you can see, made this as foolproof as they can. The car has to, to get into overdrive, you gotta have a cable, you gotta have the push-pull cable in, you gotta have the governor going, the car's gotta be going 28 miles an hour or so, um, and, and then it will go into overdrive. So then when you, when you, when you stop, um, and you want to put the car in reverse, there's no chance of it being in overdrive. Um, and you can put it in reverse and, and, and you're fine. You can never have this in overdrive or activate it in reverse. You'll, you'll absolutely damage um, this bearing back here and the bearings in here in the, uh, and, and it gets really costly to get that repaired. So it, it's, it's never advisable to, um, to you know, put workarounds in. So some people will, um, you know, disconnect the governor, and they'll have a switch on the dash. So then, when they're going, you know, whatever speed they want to go, they they hit the switch. Maybe they have a light that says, "Okay, it's in overdrive." And um, then, when they want to take it out of overdrive, they turn the switch off, and they just essentially just switching on and off the the uh, the uh, the solenoid. The problem with that is is that if you forget and you don't turn it off and the solenoid and the, and the overdrive is engaged and so you drive into your driveway, you jump out, then you jump back in the car, you don't notice that the switch is still on and you back up and you will crunch this overdrive and it gets really expensive and you'll probably only do that once. Our advice is to run this the way Borg Warner and the car manufacturers recommend it and you're not gonna have any problems. Okay, um, I think that's, um, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you very much.